Hi, welcome back. It's Adrian, the Mountain Man. Today's Tuesday, March 29th, 2022, and we are four days out from the Umstead 100, which I'll be running this Saturday, April 2nd, uh, in Umstead State Park in Raleigh, North Carolina. Uh, for those of you who've been following along, you'll know that the course is um, eight 12 and a half mile loops. And so today we're, I'm going to talk about what I have in my drop bag at the second aid station, which is about mile seven. Um, so I'll see that eight times. And then also what I've pre-prepared, I've prepared um, a Ziploc bag for every loop um, for my crew just to keep things organized so when I get in they know know what to um, what to get ready for me um, what I might need at each point in the race and then other things I threw in a few other things that in that bin that I won't need for every single loop but uh, just to have handy in the bin the same bin uh, I've also got another bin that has things like long sleeve shirt extra t-shirts extra shorts um, extra gloves if I need something like that but I didn't really go over that I mean that's just kind of um, things basically I threw a bunch of laundry <laughs> in a bin <laughs> and some shoes um, but no it's a little more organized than that but it, I didn't feel like we really need to go over that you know a t-shirt the t-shirt long sleeve shirt the long sleeve shirt um, but for the specific things that I felt like were the most important um, that's what I go over today and so you'll see in the first clip, uh, I, I did a first person view from my head looking down. The first uh, few minutes of the first clip, I kind of cut off the table a little. You can see what's going on, but it might be a little distracting or annoying um, that you might not see the whole thing if I'm holding something up. But that's just in the first couple of minutes. And when I went and looked back at that, I saw that it was off. So the second two clips, uh, I fixed that. So. Uh, I hope you enjoy, and um, thanks for getting serious. Um, so uh, watch these few clips, and I'll be back to close out the video. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, so this will be my um, setup for the first loop. Like this is what I will start off with um, in my cabin that I've rented. Um, and I'll put this stuff together probably the night before um, But this is pretty indicative of what um, will be um, on each loop in each bag and I might go over some specifics of other bags um, But I don't want to open them all I, I tried doing that filming it that way and um, Just crinkling noise <laughs> And it was very annoying to uh, listen to uh, so I've decided to refilm this in a little bit better light and a different setup um, but, uh, this is essentially what I'm going to carry. This would be the basic basics of, for every loop. Every loop is 12 and a half miles. It's going to take me, I'm predicting between, um, two and a half and three and a half hours, uh, to do each loop. And based on like calculations and practices and stuff, um, sorry, my dog is barking. Um, this is what I've come up with for what I need. So the fluids, um, I recently found out in the last month or so, maybe six weeks, that I need a lot more fluids than I traditionally have taken. Um, we did a sweat rate and um, I essentially go through 25 ounces an hour. Um, and these are 17 uh, or 500 milliliters. So I basically am going through one and a third of these um, every hour. And that's like based on the winter conditions I've been running in. And if it gets hotter, I go through more than that. So for the start of every loop, I will have Tailwind, um, either uh, Naked flavor or I think I'm gonna go with Mandarin. One with Naked, one with Mandarin flavor. Um, so in these two with the straws, they'll be the tailwind and it'll be full of water um, these two are going to be just have the tailwind mixed in them and then as I go through the aid stations um, there's a water stop at least a water stop about every four miles or a little less so as I go through one of these I'll fill up um, 
one of these empty ones with fluid. That way I'm not carry, I have all the hydration and I have all the tailwind that I need, but I'm not carrying the weight of the water, the whole loop. I'm only filling these as I need them. Um, so in addition to the hydration, I have these, these, um, these are smaller soft flasks. These are, this one here is six ounces, 170 milliliters. I think this one's uh, maybe a little bit smaller, but uh, yeah, 5.1, 150 milliliters. And so I found um, three of these, almost four will fit into one of these. Um, and so my um, crew, which is my parents, will take these and fill them. And I'll do this, like I said, the night before for the first loop. I'll take these and put, put them in here. Uh, and that way, when I'm, I have a timer on my watch every 30 minutes to, um, to eat. And so I'll just take this out, pop this open, squeeze a little bit into my mouth. Um, and so I'll do that every 30 minutes. So I should go through pretty much all of this. And then I have just a, a Yukan edge. It's just a little bit different flavor, different consistency. I found it kind of helps to, you know, I take this about the two hour mark on every loop. Um, and I just find it takes the, the flavor out of your mouth and gives you something a little bit different. So you're not like only taking this and just getting sick of it. Um, so that's, that's the basically nutrition and hydration that I'll be taking. Now the, the last um, weather report that I looked at, uh, the low is going to be like 38 um, Saturday morning and the high is going to get into maybe mid 60s, um, maybe a little bit higher. Um, so I'll definitely start off with, I, I typically, typically start off with a pair of these throwaway gloves and then with a like a nylon shell over the top of this because um, my hands get really, really cold. Um, even it, unless it's above 60, I wear something like this. Um, I won't wear the shell all over it when it gets closer to 60, but I'll at least be wearing these. And so I've got a set of these in every drop bag too, because I also sweat a lot. So then these gloves get soaked and then my hands get even more, more cold. So I'm going to switch those out. And then just for the first lap, I'm going to have this, this is a Kigal. This is just a light, um, and it has a magnet so I can put this on. I have a pair of shorts that have a pocket, a, like a stash pocket. I put the magnet in the pocket and then put this on the outside. Um, and it, it's got an external battery, which isn't the best, but you can then swap out batteries. But the first like half hour, 45 minutes is going to be dark of the first loop. So I'm going to start with that and then either put this at aid station two or um, I'll make the full loop with this and then hand it off to my, my crew. Um, so, and then this is just a post-it note to myself. I have other post-it notes and other uh, loops for my crew and like for my pacers, but you know, just make sure I set my phone to my low battery mode. Um, I'm gonna enable uh, activity tracking um, on my watch so that my parents and my crew can see where I am on the course. You know, body glide, um, the light and the battery, and then also um, sunglasses, you know, because it'd be dark when I start, but I want to remember that the sun will be coming up and then the sun will be in my face. So that's that's a typical bag. Um, there's eight loops um, and that's, but that's the that's the um, essential basic setup. Uh, some, some bags do have like a hat or a buff, like a winter hat or, or a buff. Um, in case, again, like I sweat a lot in case the hat gets wet and cold and I need a dry, or hat, a dry hat. Um, but tip, essentially this is what the, the typical drop bag, I mean, um, aid station bag for, for my crew will have in it. Okay, I wanted to take a, um, take a bag out that's going to be more indicative of um, other things that might come up. Sorry for the crinkling here. Um, so I pick up, I took loop five out. Um, this is the reason I did that is because this is when it's about to get dark. Um, so I have my headlamp um, and a spare battery that I'll just carry with me. Um, but uh, I wanted to show you uh, the notes that I give my crew and then also for my pacer. Um, so I'll have the pacer for laps five, six, seven, and eight. Uh, you can't have a pacer for the first 50, but you can for the last 50. Um, so, like I said, this is kind of indicative of what I, um, 
what I have in every single bag for my crew. Um, and so it says what loop it is, what the mileage is. So this will be mile 50 through 62 and a half. Uh, I have a note that it's going to get dark. Um, so uh, the, the basically the Sharpies are just kind of to draw attention. Um, so this says, uh, give me the headlamp and the extra battery on this loop. I'll give me a, another set of gloves if I need them. Um, I will need them, <laughs> but uh, I, I kind of put this together when the forecast was still all over the place and in some um, predictions it was going to be in the 70s. Um, that's why the, the gloves, you know, do I need a... So it's going to get dark, so that means that the, the temperature is also going to drop. So um, do I need to start... Uh, wearing a long sleeve or do I want a jacket? Um, also because we're fifth, uh, halfway into the race, uh, there's a note to ask me, um, how my phone battery is doing because that's how my crew and my pacers are going to be tracking me. They do have text message tracking, uh, for certain points for the, the race, uh, certain checkpoints, uh, essentially the f first, um, aid station start finish and then um the second aid station which is almost seven miles into every lap um, but the phone battery just gives them a better idea of where i'm at um, if i've slowed down um, when i'll be coming in to the aid station that kind of thing um, and then at the bottom here i also have a note for the next loop and i have this on every one of these um, so it's just okay i've come in they've given me all the stuff out of this bag what do they need to do to get ready for the next loop? And so the first thing um, that starts with loop five, uh, loops four, I'm sorry, is to contact or update my pacer for the next, the following loop. So just give them a text, say, hey, he's ahead or he's behind, or, you know, can you pick this up on your way in, that kind of thing. Um, and then at the bottom, just simple things that they, they'll be able to, they'll, they won't need reminders, but I just wrote it down for myself. Uh, they, they need to refill those little gel pouches and refill the water bottles. Um, so pretty basic stuff there. And then for my pacer, um, again, it's what loop we're on, the mileage that we're going to be doing. Um, and then I also have, um, the pace and it's broken down into the first section from the start finish to the first to the aid station and then from the aid station back to the start finish and so on this on loop five i'm uh, planning on running a 1324 pace for the first seven miles and then the second half is is hillier so it slows down to a 1418 pace um and then they're going to get the pacer is going to get this as i'm coming in when they start the loop so uh, again remind me that I need the headlamp because it's going to get dark on this loop and that it's going to get cooler so I need to grab that jacket or those gloves. Um, so that's that's pretty typical of like everything that's in my aid station and the notes I've written down for uh, the crew and the pacers. Um, other things in this bin, so this bin has all of the bags for each loop and then it just has some other miscellaneous stuff. I typically wear a, a you know, baseball hat, keeps the sun out of my face, keeps the sweat out of my eyes, but um, they can get pretty drenched in sweat and kind of, you know, again, if it's going to be cold, I might want to switch them out. So I just threw a few in here. Um, and then, you know, sunscreen, because uh, it might be cloudy, but I like to just throw it on anyway. And then we it's been cold, um, so I don't think we'll have any bug problems, but um, just throw that in there as well. So this isn't stuff that we'll need um, necessarily every lap, but it's just stuff that... We'll probably need throughout the day that just is a little handier but i didn't want to put too much stuff in here um you'll notice that i don't have the long sleeves uh or uh, the or jacket or long pants or anything in there um i've got that separate but just a couple of simple items that hey uh, we're not going to use this every time so i need to have something in every single bag but you know i might come in and say hey can i can i get some bug spray and then it'll be right in here so um and I've also told my crew that they can go through all the stuff that I put together and reorganize it however they want, um, as long as it makes sense to them and they, they know where things are going to be. Um, so that is um, what I have for the crew um, and the pacers. 
Okay, the next thing I wanted to go over was what I'll be putting in my drop bag. So as I mentioned earlier, this is a loop. And so it's eight loops. And so I'll have my drop bag eight times. Um, and it's like I said, almost seven miles in. And I guess I'll start over here. Uh, I mentioned earlier that the first part of the course is easier than the second part of the course. Um, I just happen to have three. I didn't go out and buy these for this race. I, I, uh, three sets of poles. I, I had a pair, um, and then I thought I'd broken them. So I could, it, it had been like a few months and I, I, they were kind of stuck and I couldn't figure out how to get them undone. So I ordered another set. Um, and then once I got those and figured out how the whole mechanism was supposed to work, I fixed the old ones. And then I did splurge on a pair of these lecky poles and they have this built in, um, basically a glove and then it's a quick release. Um, and I found that I really like that. And these are a little bit lighter. Um, and if they don't have this strap, um, so my plan is for the, uh, last three laps, if I need to, um, I will pick these up at the second aid station. I'll pick up a pair, uh, run in the last basically six, six and a half miles to the start finish, drop these off with my crew, run the first half, the next loop without them, grab the next pair <laughs> again. And it's all about like having them when I need them, but then not having to carry them when I don't need them. Um, so that's, uh, that's the, uh, that's why the I have these three and that's why all three of them are going into the drop bag at the second aid station um, Other things are just basic es essentials uh, You know some some face wipes or you know if I use the bathroom like I you know in the woods I, I carry some of these um, And so you know if I run out or if I need to or if I need to wipe my face or whatever um I've got that and then this kind of hand sanitizer goes along with that. And then also hand sanitizer is just good if you're getting sticky stuff all over you. I kind of hate that feeling so <laughs> I um, I have that as well. Um, this this pair of gloves, it's not in there, it might go in there, but this pair of gloves is fingerless. This is essentially just for when I use the pulse so, um, so that the, the strap isn't, you know, irritating the back of my hand. Same with the use. I, I typically, I'll wear these but I'll typically wear gloves. Um, like a light pair of gloves underneath these so it's not rubbing on me. Um, this is just extra tailwind. Uh, like I said, I'll have some in my bottles, but if I'm going on, on a lap and it's particularly slow and I uh, run out of all the tailwind that I have, which I shouldn't at the halfway point, but if I do, I have this and I can dump it in one of the bottles. I had a race recently where I ran out of tailwind and I was just taking water, a lot of water, and I'm uh, not getting calories or electrolytes, and my, my hamstring kind of cramped up a little bit at the end, and so just to avoid that, it just just some extra stuff. This is stuff I've had, so I'm just gonna throw it in there. Um, and then this bag is extra pair of um, throwaway gloves, you know, thin gloves, uh, extra winter hat, and then a long sleeve, you know, and again, this is for if I'm halfway out and, um, the temperature drops or I forgot some, forgot to put um, a long sleeve on, I've, I've got that out there. Um, and then, you know, more body glide and um, this stuff works amazing. You just spray it on there. Um, and then a little thing of um, sunscreen. Again, if I forget to put it on or if I'm finding that if I missed a spot or something, I can apply that. Um, and then this, <laughs> this is probably the thing people will find the strangest is, I, for some reason, when I run and I do ultras, I just crave like chocolate milk. Um, and I find it's a good way for me to get in calories. It doesn't bother my stomach. I, I know a, a lot of people it would, um, but I'll have some of this at the start and finish. But you know, if I'm, again, if I'm out there for a long time and I just, a lot of times when I'm out there in between aid stations, all I, all I can think about is I just obsess about like, I want some chocolate milk. And so this is just, it's insulated, double walled. Um, and so that's just to have out there just in case I'm like really craving it and need it to get, to get going again. Uh, but that's essentially what I'll have in my drop bag. I can't think of anything else The the aid station, the second aid station is going to have plenty of food there. I should have plenty of goose or gels. Um, 
so that's pretty much all I can think that I might need out there. I oh, I might put uh, extra pairs of socks and a pair of shoes in there, um, just you know if I start getting a bad blister. But that's that's essentially the setup. Um, so I'll go over. I'll do a sit down and go over some of the other stuff um, that I'll have with my crew. But um, you know, just kind of in case. But um, that's that's it for the bags and um, and what they'll be out there on the course. All right, um, I'll finish this up uh, with a sit down. Thanks. All right, thank you for checking that out. I hope you found it helpful. I am. Cross my fingers, everything goes well. The weather looks pretty good for this time of year in North Carolina. The weather can be all over the place. Um, and so the low right now, as the last I checked, was 38 and the high is 66, 67. So it's quite a spread. Um, so you'll see where I might need, um, you know, long sleeve shirt and some gloves in the morning. And then during the day, I won't need any of that, but then I'll get, it's going to cool off again. Um, so I'll need to, <laughs> to have more of that stuff. Um, so, and then f food and everything. I, I think I have that dialed. I've, I've been doing, um, let's see, 30 mile long runs and then back to back with a 20 mile long run. And most of the 30 mile long runs I've done out there. So I know the course, uh, I know what I take, um, throughout the course and throughout the, the day. Um, those, those. 30 mile runs were about six hours. So, you know, once we get past kind of the 10 hour mark, that's kind of the unknown for me as far as races I've done before. Um, but um, I feel pretty confident in in what I have, what I have to eat, what I have to wear. Uh, it's just gonna be <laughs> more me. How am I gonna handle it? How's my body gonna handle it? Uh, how are my feet gonna handle it? Um, but, um, I, again, I, I hope you found that helpful. If you could uh, give me a like or subscribe, I'd really appreciate it. I, I, I've said this in the last couple of videos. You know, my subscriber count is like was like nine, and now it's ten and eleven. It's up to eleven now, and so it's just fun for me. It's just kind of an interesting thing. Kind of motivates me to keep doing this. Um, I've try, I'm kind of trying to keep doing this. You know, once a week throughout the year. Um, and again, it's just for fun. It's just for. I mean, hopefully, maybe go somewhere that'd be great. But otherwise I just like doing it. I, I like, it gives me something to think about, um, helps me to plan, um, my runs a little bit better because if I'm thinking, Oh, I've got to now tell you in a video what I'm doing. Um, it helps me plan that out a little better instead of like running out the door and then being like, Oh yeah, I forgot this or I should have brought that or, uh, why do I have this kind of thing? So, um, yeah, if you could give me a like or subscribe, that'd be amazing. And, um, I um, will probably, I won't send out, a, a, a publish another video before the race, but I might make another video um, of like the night before or the morning of me getting ready and have that as a separate video. So then when I do the race, the race is just its own separate video. Um, but you probably won't see that until uh, next week after the race. Um, and if I'm, <laughs> I've got next week off. So if, as long as I can move around, <laughs> Um, and I'm conscious, then I, I'll try and get that out, at least the first one out um, sometime during the week next week. So if anybody else out there is, is running the Umstead 100 this weekend, good luck. Um, I hope it's a great time. If, if you see me, um, come up and introduce yourself. Um, I'd love to hear what uh, you guys have planned for the race. Uh, if there's anything I've forgotten, if there's anything. I know I, I have one um, subscriber who has done this race a few times before and he's been very helpful in um giving me comments and um tips and like things to look out for so uh if any if anybody else has anything like that uh i i welcome the the advice and uh so um here goes nothing and uh don't panic and i'll talk to you next week all right bye